In this tutorial, I will teach you how to model kitchen like a pro. You will model kitchen cabinets, worktop and fronts. I will pay special attention to details, such as rounded edges and milled fronts. Look at these details. They are the power of high quality architectural visualization. Let's model the kitchen using the greatest and the easiest method possible. Let's go. It's time to create kitchen cabinets. They will be arranged in the shape of the letter L next to this wall, beside the window and next to this wall. To do this, let's create a rectangle. I click on the rectangle tool, then come a little closer, left click, and I will create a rectangle 240 by 330. Let's type it 330 by 240 and press enter. This is our new rectangle. I will turn off the tiles tag. Okay. Now it will be easier to model new objects. Then I go to the offset tool, click on it. Then I click on the edge, move the cursor inside the rectangle and type 60. Okay. I will draw another lines. That's why I click on the line tool and draw additional lines on the left side and on the right side. It's done. Now I can delete unnecessary lines and faces. I select them and click delete. Okay, it's done. We have a one face in the shape of the letter L. Let's group it. I click three times right click and make a group then i move this object move the space into the corner using a push pull tool i will create the base for the kitchen cabinets i go to the edit mode double click select base then i click on the push pull tool and pull it up by 10 centimeters and press enter I will do this again. I click on the upper face, move up and press left control. Thanks to this, the kitchen cabinet will be divided from the bottom 10 centimeters and then 72 centimeters. That's why I typed this value, 72. We need to edit the base of the kitchen cabinet. That's why I click on the faces and using a push-pull tool, I push it inside by 5 centimeters from the left side, from the right side, and also here. Okay, it looks very nice. Let's close this group. Right click, close group. And we can notice that it's a good idea to move the cabinet up by 8 millimeters because I don't want to have tiles and cabinets to intersect with each other. That's why it's good to move it up by 8 millimeters, 0 0.8, and it looks fine. It's time to create furniture fronts, and I want to have a milled type of fronts. That's why I will create them using the line tool. I click on the line tool and then draw a new shape. Click somewhere here and draw a line typing 2 centimeters. Then I move up, type 68. Then I move to the left side, type 1 cm and draw another line, typing 3 cm. I will hide these cabinets. I don't need them for now. Right click and hide. And then I draw another line, typing 64. And I connect these lines together. OK. As we can notice, a new face appeared. Now I will use a push-pull tool to create a 3D object. I click on this tool, click on the face, and drag it to the right side, typing maybe not 60 because I want to have a gaps between the fronts. I will type 59.6. Let's group this element. I click three times, right click and make group. Let's unhide kitchen cabinets. Edit tab and unhide all. I need to move this front, the left side. 
I move this front to the right side, typing 0 0.2 and move it up. As we can notice, the front is not high enough. That's why we need to measure kitchen cabinets. I will use a tape measure tool to check all the distances. I click on it and here we have 10 centimeters, it's fine. And I check the second value, second distance. And here we have 82 centimeters. It should be 72 centimeters. This is my mistake, but we can fix it very quickly. Double click, click on the face and pull it down by 10 centimeters. Now it looks fine and I will move it down and place it somewhere in the middle. I will move the front to the right side and type 0 0.2. It's done. It's time to copy the prompt. That's why I click on it, move to, press left control and copy it by 60 centimeters and do it multiple times. I will copy this front again to the right side and then rotate it by 90 degrees. I will move this front to the right side. Let's check the distance of the front from the bottom. It's two centimeters and I will do the same on the right side. and copy it to the left side. I copied the front and let's check this front here. As we can see, we need to adjust them because they intersect with each other. I right click on the cabinet and hide it. And now I can adjust it. That's why I double click on the front click on the face and using a push-pull tool, I will change its position and the same here, double click and push-pull tool. It's done. Now it looks fine. I close this group, edit and unhide all. And as you can see, the fronts are ready. It's time to edit furniture fronts. I will focus on the fronts here and here. I will divide them into three parts. To do this, we need to use guidelines. I move a little closer, double click, and then I click on the tape measure tool. Using a tape measure tool, we can create guidelines. I want to divide this front into three parts, 18 centimeters, 18 centimeters and 36 centimeters. I click on the tape measure tool, click on the edge at the top, move it down and type 18 centimeters. I will do the same. I click on the dashed line and type 18. The last distance is 32 and it's divided. Let's edit this front. I select the bottom part of the front from left to right, and now I can move this front up. I can do the same using a push-pull tool. So I click on this tool and move it up to the dash guideline. And this is our front. Let's copy it. I click on it, move tool, and move it down pressing left control. I want to have a gap between the fronts. That's why I type in 80.4. Okay, and do the same again. Press left control and copy it by 80.4. Okay, let's edit this front using a push-pull tool. I select the face and adjust it to this front on the right side. Okay, as we can see, everything looks fine. I will delete these unnecessary guidelines. I click on the Edit tab and Delete Guides. Okay, 
Let's delete this front on the right side. I press delete and select these fronts. Move them to the right side, press left control and type 120. And as we can see, these fronts are divided into three parts. It looks much more interesting. It's time to create a worktop. To do this, I click on the rectangle tool and draw a vertical rectangle. It will be easier to use the arrows on the keyboard. That's why I drag my cursor to the corner here and press arrows on the keyboard. Try with left arrow or right arrow. And here I have red plane. It means that I will create a vertical rectangle. I click on it and we can notice that we have vertical rectangle. I type 62 by 2 centimeters. And it's done. I click three times to select the space and move it up. And this is our worktop. I would like to change the shape of this rectangle. That's why I will create arc over here. To do this, I click on the arc tool. This is two point arc. Click in the corner, click somewhere here at the upper edge and move the cursor to create arc. I can click on this line and change in the Entity Info tab the number of segments from 12, for example, to 20. And it's much more smoother. I will delete this unnecessary face, unnecessary edges. And this is our shape. We can create a 3D shape using a push-pull tool, but it cannot be that easy because here we have an L shape and it will create some difficulties. That's why we will use a new tool called Follow Me. To do this, I need to create additional line. So I click on the line tool and draw additional lines over here and here. And now I can use a Follow Me tool. To do this, I click on the Follow Me tool, then on the created face and drag this face along the line which I have just created. I need to do this precisely because as you can see, it's not that easy. Okay, it looks fine. And that's all. And now I will use a push-pull tool to pull it to the left side by two centimeters. And this worktop looks very fine. I will group it. I click three times, right click and make group. I will select all the furniture fronts, press left control, select all the fronts, right click and also make group. And now we can create a new tag called kitchen cabinets or kitchen furniture and assign all these groups to the new tag. I press left control, select all these cabinets, prawns and worktop and in the entity info tab assign the selection to kitchen furniture. Let's check if everything is correct. As we can see it looks very fine. All objects are assigned to the proper text. Remember that in a newer versions, for example, 2021 or 2022, we have tags. And in older versions of SketchUp, for example, 2017, we will have layers instead of tags, but it's all the same. And these are our cabinets.